There are many ways to seamlessly integrate Jira and Confluence together to create a better synergy of shared information between the two applications. In this video, you'll learn how to use the Jira Issue Filter macro to include Jira project information in Confluence. Issue management provided by Jira and content creation and collaboration provided by Confluence are essential to many projects. Integrating Jira and Confluence together improves shared understanding, team satisfaction, and productivity, and provides a single source of real-time project knowledge. The Jira Issue Filter Macro is a versatile tool that facilitates the sharing of up-to-date information between Jira and Confluence. This macro can be used to display a single Jira issue on a page, display a list of issues, display a count of issues, and even create new issues in Jira from within Confluence. The macro refreshes its data every time the page it's on is refreshed, so the information presented on the Confluence page always reflects the current state of an issue or Jira project. The Jira Issue Filter macro can be used by any team member who can edit pages and can view issues that are referenced by the macro. Let's begin by using the Jira Issue Filter macro to display a single Jira issue on a Confluence page. We'll be working with this blank page in Confluence. There are several ways to display an issue in the body of a page using the Jira Issue Filter macro. The most direct is to simply paste the issue URL into the Confluence page. Confluence immediately auto-converts the URL to a Jira Issue Filter macro link. When the page is published, the macro displays information about the issue, including the issue ID and current status. Clicking the link navigates directly to the issue in Jira. Notice also that a link to the page we were just working on has been automatically added to the Confluence Pages section. Clicking this link conveniently returns us to the page. Now, we'll edit the page again, but this time we'll manually insert the Jira Issue Filter macro by selecting it from the Insert More Content menu. The Macro's search field can be used to identify a Jira issue. You can paste the issue URL, enter a JQL query, or perform a simple text search. Let's search all issue fields for a particular text string. We can see that matches are found in the summary field of these returned issues. If more than one issue is returned, make sure the checkbox for the issue you want is checked and click Insert to add the issue link to the page. Now let's edit this instance of the macro to display multiple issues instead. This JQL query returns all issues associated with the Mars project. If we click Display Options, we can see that these issues will be displayed in a table. We can also change the maximum number of issues shown, and we can remove unwanted columns from the table. After clicking Insert, we can see that a table placeholder has been added to the page. When the page is published, a table with a list of issues appears. This list is dynamic, so as new issues are added to the project in Jira, they will appear on this list whenever the page is refreshed or by manually clicking the refresh link. Another capability of the Jira Issue Filter macro is to display a simple issue count. We'll insert a new instance of the macro and apply the same query as our table. But this time, in the Display Options, we'll select Total Issue Count. When the page is published, we can see that an issue count has been added to the page. And finally, the Jira Issue Filter macro can be used to directly create issues in Jira from within Confluence. We'll take a quick look at one example of this capability, but for a more in-depth look, please check out Creating Jira Issues in Confluence in this same video tutorial series. When configuring the macro, select Create New Issue. Now you can identify the parent project for the issue and provide some basic information. After clicking Insert, the issue will automatically be created in the Jira project, and an issue link will be inserted in the Confluence page. After publishing the page, we not only see the newly created link, 
but we can see that the issue has also been added to our dynamically updated issue list. Let's quickly recap what we covered in this video. We used the Jira issue filter macro to include links to Jira issues on a Confluence page, to display a dynamically updated list of Jira issues, to display a simple issue count, and we saw one way the macro can be used to create a Jira issue. Be sure to check out the Creating Jira Issues in Confluence video in this series for additional methods of creating issues. To learn more about this topic, enroll in the Jira and Confluence Together on-demand course at Atlassian University.